Be sure to give your sample tubes a quick spin before you store them. When you're freezing them, especially flash freezing, make sure that they're standing straight up and try to, if possible, to store your samples with high concentration. These are just a few tips that will help prevent sample loss. Basically, it's all about minimizing the surface area to volume ratio. Even if you use low bind tubes, you're still going to have some molecules sticking to the sides of the tube, and this is going to cause you to lose some of those molecules you care about. It's going to mess up the concentration of the solution that you think it is. It's going to be less because some of it's stuck to the side of the tube and things like this. And basically, the more surface area, the more that you have in contact with the walls of the tube, the more opportunities there are for those molecules to be sticking to the sides of the tube. And so sometimes there's little drops on the side of the tube, and when you go to freeze them, now you have an increased surface area, whereas if you do a quick spin down, you're going to reduce that surface area, and therefore you're going to have less of the, less molecules to be able to stick to the wall. Similarly, it might be tempting to kind of just toss that, um, toss that tube into the liquid nitrogen to flash freeze it, but it's a lot better if you use some side of holder to hold it straight up, or if you use my like fishing technique, I like I just attach a wire to it um, and fish it in so that I can hold it straight up, at least when it initially freezes, and then you can like let go once it's already kind of set a little to finish the freezing. This way you're not gonna freeze it with it all kind of like spilled on the side and therefore have increased surface area. Um, this is not only going to have more molecules stick to the tube, which can then decrease your concentration, but it can also increase your concentration because you're going to have more exposed to the air, which can evaporate. So basically, it's going to be your concentration is going to be unreliable. Also, if you have it like on the cap, when you open that cap, well now things can spray out and you can lose some of your sample. So bottom line, you want to avoid you losing your sample, so spin it down and hold it straight up. Also, if you have really tiny samples, um, try to make them in smaller tubes so that there's less surface area lost. Another time this comes into play, if you're using like syringe filters, be sure to use like a smaller one if you have smaller samples because you're going to lose a lot in the actual, like just like stuck in the filter. So be sure to use equipment that actually matches the size of your samples. Another thing is to, um, so don't Try not to work with too tiny of volumes as well because then you're inevitably going to have a high surface area to volume ratio. Um, so it's really tempting, it's, it's great to store aliquots so that you like single use serving so you don't have to um, freeze thaw things a lot of times. But if your aliquots are too small, not only is the pipetting potentially unreliable, but you're also going to have some loss due to sticking and due to evaporation. Um, so try to avoid really, really tiny volumes of your aliquots. And finally, try to store things at a higher concentration. This is for a couple reasons. One of them has to do with the molecules sticking to the sides of the wall. There's only so much surface on the sides of the, um, the, like the walls of your tube. And so there's only so many places that molecules can stick to. Now, if you only have a few molecules in your solution, so if you have a low concentration, you can have basically most of your molecules be sticking to the wall. Even the, so the same number of molecules, if they were to stick to the wall when you had a more concentrated solution, it'd be like a drop in a bucket compared to a drop in like a teaspoon when you have this really dilute solution. So if you have more, more constant, a more concentrated solution, the proportional loss is going to be less. So sometimes people even like add like BSA, a lot of times you might buy like enzymes or something solution that has BSA. There's multiple reasons for including BSA in things, but one of them is that it can kind of coat the walls so that your protein um, doesn't, ha like your protein is less of a proportion of the overall solution, and therefore the BSA can kind of like hog the wall so that your sample doesn't bind there. There are other reasons for the BSA as well, including just kind of like increase the concentration of stuff um, proteins are often more stable at a higher concentration, um, less likely to unfold. They don't have as much like space to stretch out and things. Um, various reasons that more concentrated solutions tend to be more stable. So it's better to keep things um, frozen at a higher concentration and then um, dilute them out later with like serial dilutions if necessary. One last thing, when you go to actually use your sample, be sure to mix it first, so like pipette it up and down a few times, especially if it's been frozen, you can kind of get the concentration be uneven in different parts of the solution. Um, so you want to make sure that you mix it before you actually go to use it. So, hope that helped you um, store your sample safely.